Hola and welcome to our 27th uh, episode of the Ruthless Dog and Pony Show. Happy New Year, I am Julio Panicello. I am the dream alchemist at Ruthless Painters and I'm going to be the host of this first uh, 2021 uh, presentation. And uh, I am hosting from The Lodge, uh, which is featuring the exhibition Sexy Christmas uh, until tomorrow. So we still have a couple of days. Um, and I'm really excited because I have a couple of paintings featured in the exhibition and um, I'm also featured among an amazing group of artists. Um, so you have today and also tomorrow, which is a day that closes, um, uh, an opportunity to come to the gallery. It's on Western, on East Hollywood, and uh, come see the show. And also letting you know that it's by appointment only and that you can make an appointment through uh, the Lodge dot la website and um it's one person at a time thank you um jen <laughs> and um it's an incredible exhibition and um there are uh, drawings and paintings by uh louise bonnet i'm so happy to uh be featured in a show along um her also brian calvin uh, Isabel Yelling, China de la Vega, Niels ben Benson, and uh, Alice Lodge herself. So um, please, please, please uh, come see the show before it closes. It's a wonderful exhibition, and I have two paintings uh, that I'm really happy about. And um, also, I wanted um, to thank uh, Alice Lodge for allowing me to come here um, and perform my shenanigans. So thanks so much for um, letting me do this. And after um, this introduction, I'm just going to, uh, for those of you who have uh, never heard of uh, the Ruthless Dog and Pony Show, um, we do this uh, weekly live and it's a presentation featuring the conceptual and stylistic inspiration behind our painting webinars. We introduce the theme of the next painting webinar and we talk about the inspiration behind it. Uh, we bring up some um, art history references, um, a bit of commentary. We talked about the reasons why we're going to do it and we try to make a connection, a conceptual connection between the subject that we use uh, for our uh, painting collection and whatever happens around us. So, um, yeah, I'm so excited that um, to be back the last uh, few weeks because of the holidays, we couldn't do the uh, Ruthless Dog and Pony Show. So um, I'm really, really excited to uh, do this today. And without further ado, I'm just going to tell you the genesis of the next um, painting webinar. It's going to... Um, it's going to be titled um, Toasters. We're going to be painting toasters. And the reason why um, we're going to do that, it's because um, uh, during the, these holidays, I uh, was completely uh, absorbed in social media. And there's this trend of uh, people posting what's called, um, or what people say, um, are uh, videos that lived rent-free in our heads. Um, so one of the videos, let me see if I can just... Really, sorry guys, um, I thought it was going to work out, but um, so I'm reading that the sound is not on. So I just apologize. I don't know exactly how or why, but I'm going to give it, a, give it a try again later at the end of the presentation, and I'm going to try something different. But anyhow, that was a video that was um, featured on the Today Show on May 4th, 1988. And it was part of a, um, a, a series featuring or exploring supermarket tabloids and how seriously uh, people uh, would, take, uh, would take them. 
So I remember this video. I watched it. Uh, I don't know exactly when, but it was definitely uh, before the 2000s. Uh, and um, I was so happy to watch it again. And I, I just watched it a million times. I thought it was hilarious. And it just took me back to a time when um, actually um, those weird um, supermarket tabloids was, uh, were so fun to read. I remember, I think it was the, I forgot the name of the paper, uh, the news, something about the news. Anyhow, it was just a paper filled with really strange um, headlines. And um, so we thought it would be a good idea. We also, uh, to paint or to use toasters. Okay, all right, well, we're back and um, thank you. So we're having all sorts of like technical problems, but that's okay. And yeah, I was just like looking at references about the video and on IMDb, this video is considered by some as the greatest, uh, containing the greatest interview in television history. And certainly enough, when we shared it in our, in our social media, some people um, mentioned that she's doing a good job uh, during the interview. So. Um, yeah, we were all decided, uh, we decided on using the toasters and what I'm going to do next. Uh, well, actually, I have the image right here. So it was very hard to find uh, painting references uh, throughout modern art history of toasters. And I had a, a very hard time. And uh, one of the things that um, I, I remembered or I thought of is um, uh, this painting. This painting is by um, an American Latvian artist. Her name is um, Vija Selmans. It's titled Heater and it's uh, from 1964. And I um, first um, saw um, her work maybe a couple of years ago. I think there was a retrospective in, um, the, in San Francisco. Um, and this painting really stood out. This painting is in the permanent collection in a museum in New York, and I'll find out which one. But um, yeah, this is part of our um, collection or the series of uh, early works that she did in the uh, 1960s. So uh, Villa um, tagged along, along um, um, pop art in a different way. Um, she actually um, concentrated on painting mundane objects uh, in detail rather than just using uh, other kinds of medium or media, I'm sorry. So in fact, uh, this painting um, was made when she was a graduate student at UCLA at the time and engaged in a methodical depiction of the contents of her studio, um, recording the physical condition of the objects and the space around them with precise attention to detail. Uh, painted in a highly realistic fashion, the heater appears to radiate warmth from its glowing coils. Isolated against a field of gray, the heater is separated from its physical context, rendering it neutral and almost abstract. Um, I am fascinated by, fascinated by this piece of work. I always thought it was uh, uh, very interesting how everything in the painting seems uh, monochromatic. And then this... Uh, uh, orange paint or the color that uh, it really stands out. I also love the composition. I'm fascinated by uh, the electrical wire. It's such an intriguing painting. I was um, also reading about uh, how she is more or our critics consider her more related to um, Giorgio Morandi, the Italian um, painter than the pop artist. So uh, it's not a toaster, but it kind of like uh, reminds me of uh, an electrical appliance that works with heat. So that would be the strongest um, image, uh, painted image that I could think of in regards of using an electrical appliance as a subject matter. And um, this will be a collection of paintings that will be focused on depicting a toaster.
because uh, there are many paintings of toasts, of bread, um, going back to uh, Vermeer, that painting of the maiden um, taking bread out of a basket, but obviously not many paintings about toasters. Toasters were introduced, I think they were invented first in the UK in the turn of, at the turn of the century, the 20th century, and then there were some patents produced in the 1910s in the US. Um, and let me see if I can find uh, other images that I wanted to bring up. Um, yeah, so speaking of the 60s and speaking of uh, pop artists, this is a sculpture by uh, Klaus Aldenburg, um, famous during that time, the 60s. He's still alive, by the way, uh, for doing oversized sculptures of mundane objects. Uh, this is titled uh, Model Ghost Toaster 1963 to 1969. It's part of a series and it's made out of canvas. And he uh, was born, he's born, he's from Sweden. Uh, I don't know where he lives, but he, uh, he's still alive. He was born in 1929. And um, I thought it would be interesting uh, to bring up uh, this sculpture. I found a few sculptures and a couple of photographs of toasters. Um, just gonna bring this uh, toaster also by a contemporary artist. Um, his name is uh, Darren Lago, uh, Parthenon Toaster 1996. And he's a contemporary artist that is best known for fusing two recognizable objects into a single dissonant sculpture. And he is concerned with the material trappings of human lives. And his works are both playful, playful and provocative, uh, such as this one. And I thought um, this would be interesting. Uh, uh, also, a different kind of a toaster. It's not the kind that I would have... Um, in my house, but uh, looking uh, or reading about this conceptual juxtaposition of two themes, perhaps uh, the toaster that we're going to paint could conceptually have an extension of meaning beyond its function. And I think here I want to start driving uh, conceptually this subject into something that we could relate about what we are currently living. Um, obviously in the past couple of days or this week something uh, ridiculously dramatic and tragic uh, happened and I think conceptually the idea of the toaster uh, was one before uh, Wednesday but I think now it turned out to be a different one and um, the Parthenon is, was um, the, one of the government buildings um, and it would be uh, interesting to also think of our toaster paintings uh, becoming perhaps a metaphor for government uh, and I'm just gonna leave it like uh, at this point point. and I found this incredible photograph by a Mexican artist her name is uh, Tania Franco Klein she was born in 1990 uh, the title is toaster self-portrait and this belongs to a series um, titled Our Life in the Shadows. And um, naturally, this is not just a photograph of a toaster, but I think um, it's a very charged photograph that contains two portraits. Um, one is the self-portrait of the artist, and this is something that may be interesting in regards um, of considering a, a really uh, alive toaster if you have one that has a reflective, a reflective surface because this could be not just a painting of a toaster but maybe the painting of a toaster that's reflecting an image. In addition to that uh, there is an image of a boy, uh, a, a, a photograph of a boy next to um, the toaster and if you notice on the bottom right corner of the photograph um, you can see the actual face of the photographer of the artist 
also featured inside of the photograph. So um, for the purposes of using a toaster in this collection of, period, uh, of, of paintings, uh, check out the composition of this photograph because I brought it not just because I find it interesting, but also because compositionally this could be a good example of how to bring in uh, light direction, shadows, uh, a, a table that shows an edge, the toaster is dangerously close to the edge of the table, and um, a light direction that's very interesting, and um, obviously the reflection of a face, and the addition of another object that complements the narrative of uh, the image. So um, hopefully this will inspire you to uh, grab a toaster that you may have, if you have one, and do this from live rather than doing um, uh, or using a photograph. We're going to uh, gather a few photographs of toasters that we're going to upload in the shared folder that's going to be available for those who register for the webinar, but we highly, highly encourage you to um, pull out a toaster if you have one and do this from live. It could be an, a very neat um, still life assignment. This, believe it or not, is uh, Calder. <clears throat> um, so Alexander Calder is famous for the mobiles, but he also did some sculptures. This was um, done in 1942, it's titled Toaster. And he was a many, uh, an American sculptor known for both his innovative mobiles, uh, the kinetic sculptures powered by motors or air, and um, yeah, so this is, a, I've never seen this before, but I think it's really interesting. And um, one of the things that I also learned about Calder is that um, he preferred not to analyze his work. He um, wasn't really interested in theories or interpretation. It reminds me of the essay Against Interpretation by, I forgot the, author, but I'll, I'll remember, maybe you guys can help me. Um, anyhow, <laughs> sometimes with these presentations I get some uh, blanks, but yeah, um, and I'm going to make a connection between this um, non-use of conceptual theories with uh, the word of the, uh, uh, the heater, because she wasn't also interested in um, conceptual theories about her work. She's, was in, she's interested in the actual process of working. So actually I'm going to make a jump from this, um, from this sculpture to something that is not a sculpture but that I found really interesting. There's this guy who wrote a book um, the book, it's, it's titled The Toast Project. I'm making a connection between Calder 1942 uh, to this um, uh, sculpture. It's not technically, it wasn't created to, uh, as a sculpture, but I, I think it's a, it's a beautiful sculpture. So the, the Toaster Project, it's a book, and um, the book explains the story uh, or the journey um, of the author um, to build an electric, an electric toaster from scratch um, without buying components. He was uh, uh, fascinated with the idea that um, we cannot, as single individuals, create something uh, alone. Um, and he took that premise and uh, decided to buy the cheapest toaster, take it apart, and then identify all the objects and try to make the objects from scratch. Make the metal, uh, the stainless steel, he went to a mine, he asked um, scientists how to create uh, plastic, and uh, he, uh, he took five, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, nine months to build something, and this is the image of the actual toaster that he was able to build from scratch. And um, so it cost 20, 150 times more than uh, an actual toaster. And this is supposed to be a poignant commentary on commodification and the uh, disposability of consumer culture. Um, so uh, I highly recommend you go on YouTube and then you hear him talk about 
uh, how he uh, actually uh, built uh, the toaster from scratch because he's hilarious and very interesting. Um, so the Calder sculpture reminds me a little bit of what he tried to do. He wasn't intentional in, in artistically intentional, but I think the result, it's not only artistic, but um, conceptually very meaningful. Uh, this is another sculpture. I don't know if you can see um, uh, the actual photograph. Uh, the title of this is um, Mona Lisa Toaster. Uh, was built in 2000, or created rather, in 2007 by Christopher Axelbo. And what he did was just tweaked an actual toaster into making toast with the Mona Lisa face on them. Um, so by emulating divine presence, Axelvo's work whimsically addresses the aura, aura that surrounds the original Da Vinci painting through the decidedly unmiraculous process of repeatedly grilling the Mona Lisa on a toast. According to Walter Benjamin, the aura of the work of art emerges out of ritual associated with religious cult and is attached to the physical presence of a unique object. Anyhow, it goes on and on, and I think it's very uh, interesting and fun and a different way of perhaps not using, using a toaster as a subject for a painting, but using a toaster as a subject for uh, art. And several people have... Um, several several artists have done it um, differently, and I thought this would, was interesting in the sense that it's a sculpture, but it involves the idea of bringing a famous painting into the mix. So uh, it doesn't paint Mona Lisa's, it toasts a Mona Lisa's, which I think conceptually it's interesting. This is an actual painting. Uh, the only the other only painting that I found. Uh, actually, the only painting I found, <laughs> yeah, technically the only painting, it's by Gianni Cacciarini, the toaster. He's a contemporary artist, born in 1941, and he's primarily influenced by the 1960s. And there is a connection here between, um, oh my gosh, we have like a record number of uh, audience <laughs> right now. Yay! <laughs> Seven people. So he, uh, just like uh, Villa, uh, he uh, was influenced by pop art in the sense that uh, uh, pop artists were obsessed to desecrate uh, their contemporary culture by using totally mundane and uh, stupid um, objects and elevating them to... Um, um, highbrow um, um, status. So uh, I like this painting a lot because of the composition, obviously, but also because it's not just a single toaster. In fact, I do not recognize uh, where the toaster is. I just uh, see where the cable is, but you have other objects. It almost looks like there's trash or re something uh, made out of plastic. There's a cup, there's some leaves. So what I really love about the painting, it's the fact that this is not a clear image of a toaster. And sometimes when we paint, we choose subjects that are clean and recognizable with perspectives or points of view that are not confusing. And there's something uh, bold and unapologetic about using a subject uh, matter and arrange it in a way that feels confusing and not easily recognizable. I look at this painting, I read the title, and the first thing that I think of is, where is the toaster? Or is this a toaster? And naturally, I think the artist wanted us to um, feel or um, think this way. There's something really interesting about that. So another uh, example of a painting of a toaster that doesn't conform uh, traditional um, composition or point of, point of view and also consider that fact when you choose and select your object and how you want to arrange it. Uh, finally, this is not related uh, technically to a uh, painting, but uh, there is this uh, person. His name is Bashir Tome, uh, 21, I think he's from the UK. 
And I'm just going to mention, uh, uh, before I talk about this, I'll mention a quote by this person, uh, Sam Levinson, um, who said, our, our to toaster has two settings, too soon or too late. And I just smiled after reading the quote because this is so true. I just have never um, met a toaster <laughs> that didn't allow me to step away from the actual device. Um, as you know, uh, toasting bread uh, with a toaster is not easy. <laughs> Depending on the kind of bread, the brand of bread, um, and mostly those two things, you would need more time or less time. In fact, it's really annoying to just find the exact time that you need on a specific toaster to toast the bread and then buying another bread <laughs> and realizing that the time doesn't work the same. So it's a really stupid appliance. But um, anyhow, this guy, it's not, it's not patented and it's not commercial, commercialized. But this um, uh, scientist... Um, uh, uh, person uh, just uh, invented a toaster that is designed to work by color and this is why I brought this image here to the presentation because I just love uh, Ecru and um, or, uh, aka Titanium Buff and uh, this is a beautiful range of color um, that you can achieve or extract uh, from uh, bread so the toaster functions um, this way um, you put the bread in and you select the color that you want of um, the, the, the bread. And depending on the color, then uh, the toaster will uh, heat up the bread and toast it to, the, to match the exact colors. So <laughs> I'm just so excited um, to see this um, for, uh, on sale because I am going to buy it. Uh, I think it's super clever and I uh, also love um, whoever uh, took this photograph uh, because I, I just think it's super uh, aesthetically uh, beautiful and appealing. Uh, this uh, ring of toast reminds me of a color wheel. So uh, naturally they just uh, did it in the, in, in, uh, with that intention. I love the numbers around the color wheel and I also love uh, the arrangement of the toastiness based on value from lighter to darker. So it's not a toaster and uh, again if you just put toast art on, on your browser you're going to get a lot of examples of people uh, using bread. Um, I used bread myself um, before. Um, but I brought it because of the connection between the color and the function. And um, what else? Um, I think that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show you maybe something else. Uh, no, I think that's... Yeah, oh, that's an, um, another image that I found of the Mona Lisa toaster, perhaps a little bit better. But this reminds me, in a way, compositionally, um, to the painting by Villa uh, Selmans. Uh, in a way, it's a different color um, naturally, but it's a very similar um, composition. There's no distinction between surface and wall, which is very interesting. Um, and it's a reflective uh, surface, so this could be uh, interesting as well in regards of like painting it. But um, I like the size of the object compared to the empty space. So there are a lot of artistic decisions that we will have to make when um, deciding how to place uh, the object on our paintings. And I thought this was a good example of a, a great composition. And finally, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go back to the painting of uh, Villa Selmans. And I want to talk a little bit about her process and her work. Because I think that um, so far, I've been able to bring examples, but I haven't made a connection, a conceptual connection between uh, the fact that we're painting toasters and what we are living through. And the closest I came was to uh, 
bringing the Parthenon, the government building, and, um, and mixing it with a toaster, and how we are in a political situation where the government is in a slow burn um, and getting really toasted. Perhaps that could be a connection. Um, someone mentioned to me that uh, in order to get the perfect toast, um, you just have to be very careful about uh, the amount of heat that you apply, in a way uh, implying that anything that uh, is better needs a little bit of friction of, um, uh, yeah, a little bit of friction or a little bit of stress. Uh, the idea of like a, a stressor making us uh, better um, and um, that's what I've got um, in regards of con connecting conceptually this idea of a toaster with what we're going through. But if you have any other ideas, um, please just um, comment now or you can comment on the post later um, that we're going to put on Instagram. And this is going to be on YouTube and we would love for you to also engage uh, if you can with, uh, with that, with your comments. But before I leave... Um, talking about um, Vija, Vija, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, she says, I'm not a very confessional artist, you know. I don't even reveal what I'm feeling in my work or what I think about the president. I use nature. I use found images. And I wanted to read this because it's important in this time of chaos and uh, complete... Um, this combobulation to read a quote from an artist that mentions that she works or creates um, not as a reaction of what happens outside of her world but uh, just because she has to or she loves it um, she uses nature and uh, she uses found images so um, yeah, um, another quote that she, um, um, or that I found, I could never do portraits or things that are too psychologically alive in the real world. Selman's work is not autobiographical. She generally does not make work about her experiences or her feelings, but she has... Um, commented that many of these 1960s works relate to her early childhood memories of the Second World War. Thinking about these childhood memories, she said, it was a time of great stress, mostly because there was so much noise and, and chaos, and my biggest fear was being left somewhere and not finding my parents. So let me just try to unpack these uh, three paragraphs I love the idea of her um, not only n not making portraits, but consciously just being as away from portraiture or anything alive as possible. And the fact that um, she confesses or connects um, her production of paintings during the 60s to her child childhood experience of chaos and noise chaos and noise and um, her fear about being uh, essentially abandoned. So um, choosing objects at the time, isolating them uh, from any other, like on this painting, this one right here, maybe she is not doing anything psychologically evident, but she is in fact choosing an object um, that has meaning, uh, perhaps by omission. So... Um, yeah, and another, finally, another thing she mentioned, the reason I think I do images that require so much time, because she's very, very detailed and she spends a lot of time in each painting, is that I feel the physical work itself lets some other thing that um, uh, comes through, letting something unconsciously seep through, some subtlety that my brain was not capable of figuring out. Figuring out. So the idea of spending time painting it's more important than conceptually connecting it to something and um, also the fact that uh, painting allows her um, uh, subconscious or yeah subconscious 
to reveal things that she wouldn't be able to do um, by uh, perhaps rationalizing thoughts. So let's um, use the toaster for whatever conceptual reason um, from uh, representing our government right now to just do it f um, for the sake of letting our subconscious um, pour some nuances that are now trapped there. But the idea would be that tomorrow, Saturday, we're going to change the day, but tomorrow, Saturday at 11 Pacific time, we will choose either a toaster and paint it from life or an image of a toaster that we're just going to help, uh, we're going to combine or compile. And that will be our subject for the very first collection of paintings of 2021. And I personally want to end 2021 in December and go back to the very first collection of paintings and think this is what we painted and this is what it meant. And during the webinar or after the webinar, we can talk about um, ideas that maybe come up when we paint uh, toasters and how we can connect them with, um, yeah, with a painting. Register online. We're going to send uh, the link also on a newsletter uh, that we're going to email right after the presentation along with this video. Uh, please, please, please join us. This is the best opportunity to start the new year uh, fulfilling uh, the right resolutions and one of them should be uh, create. Uh, we were talking about how the opposite or the best antidote to chaos and destruction is creativity. And um, I know it sounds corny and cheesy, but um, we truly believe that could help us cope. Um, with everything that's going on. Uh, I hope you guys are safe. Um, and thank you, uh, everyone who joined. Uh, thank you, Claire and Jen and Hania and um, Brian. I, if you're here, my goodness. Uh, Dina, Lois, uh, Denise. Um, yeah, so thanks everyone so much for, and so many people that I don't even know. Darlene. And Julie, Julie has a story about um, a toaster. I know you emailed me, but I will just mention it uh, tomorrow during the webinar. And um, yeah, Kathy, thanks so much. This was fantastic. We have eight people. This is a record. We're still single digits, but <laughs> we're so appreciative. And please register and also please come see the show. Uh, not just because two of my paintings are here, but also because it's a wonderful show and that um, uh, it's only today and tomorrow. And please support the Lodge. There was a lot of effort to put this show together. Um, I want to give a shout out to Alice again for including me, but mostly for uh, making it happen. Curating and exhibiting is a form of art. It, uh, so it's not just... Uh, uh, painting that's considered art. So it takes work, it takes time, and it involves a lot of artistic decisions. So um, yeah, um, come support the show today and tomorrow, maybe tomorrow after the webinar, and um, you can make an appointment or even call, and you'll be by yourself. Um, so it's perfectly safe. Uh, all right, everyone, and this was 40 minutes long, so I just I just couldn't stop talking because I miss doing this and it's been uh, three weeks. All right, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much.